there. My name is Scott Stevens. I am the author of Introduction to Statistics, Think and Do, um, often called the pineapple book because it has a pineapple on the cover. Um, aside from the pineapple, people often ask me, you know, why, why Think and Do? What's that all about? And it goes back to when I was in grade school learning math, and I just remember the teacher saying, okay, everybody take out your Think and Do book. And the Think and Do book back then was a, just a workbook, and, you know, um, at the very top was the lesson, and it was usually pretty short. It was maybe the distributive property, and then they'd do an example, and then a bunch of examples below that that we had to do. And so we spent a lot of time doing the math, and um, it worked pretty well for me. So fast forward, you know, 30 plus years, now I'm teaching math and statistics, and for the intro stats class, I'm teaching uh, math to a lot of students who are not particularly inspired by math. And so I wanted to sort of tap into that whole think and do technique, because one thing I noticed about these students is they have no tolerance for a long lecture. I could not be up there speaking at them for more than 10, 15, 20 minutes. So I wrote this book to accommodate uh, the methodology that I remembered back in the 70s. And it was basically, you know, it was structured page format, you know, an idea, a topic, a definition, or methodology, or theory, or whatever, followed by an example, followed by a your turn. And I don't think this is unique to any of us who teach. We were, you know, this is a common way to teach. You've got to keep them on task, keep them engaged. The difference is this textbook um, accommodates that. It um, encourages that. It is a it's a textbook and a workbook, and so you can actually teach from it on the board and then do an example. They're looking at it. They have that same example on, on their on their desk. And it's even designed for that. You know, it's, it's ring bound. They open it up to say, you know, whatever page you want them to open it up to, 74, and they can take notes, read, and then on the, you know, at the bottom there's an empty space. That's the one that they work on. So it really accommodates that whole notion of uh, listen to a little bit, learn a little bit, and then do some stuff. And I can I can keep in regular contact with the students, walking around, keeping them on task. So it's um, it's really helpful for for keeping them, you know, engaged in the in the classroom environment. Um, it also they you know it's also nice because they don't have to read this book if they come to class. I actually present the book to them in class, and and this was done because I just couldn't get students to read the book. Um, you know, from a standard textbook perspective, and uh, I would try and try, and some would, some would read it and get it, some would read it and not get it, but the vast majority just wouldn't read it. They were too intimidated by it. Um, so with this book, if they come to class, um, they don't have to read it. I'm presenting it to them, and for those that do read it, you know, they miss a class or they go over it. I think it's um, a lot easier for them to open it up and get started because it's just you know sort of the skeleton, the framework of, of the important things they need to know. In the classroom, I fill in the details, but when they're reading it by themselves at home, I think they're more comfortable with, oh, this, this is what I need to know, this is how I apply it, and with any luck, they do the your turn problem as well. Um, so it's far less intimidating. I, I've had uh, pretty good luck having my students read it. When, you know, when they miss class, um, they read it, and they don't seem to mind it. Um, so that's the, the, the main uh, unique part about this book, is, is the structure, is the presentation. Content-wise, it's fairly standard. I, I front-load it at the beginning with some, what I consider sort of practical skills, such as percentages. I'm always surprised with um, how many people don't understand percentages. And, and, you know, for example, you know, when the CDC says the flu vaccine is 60% effective, you know, first off, what does that mean? Second off, how did they arrive at that value? And um, it's it's not completely trivial. It's actually um, it's trickier than you think. And I like to get through that with them because a lot of these students are not taking a second stats class and will never do a hypothesis test. So I want them to have some uh, basic math skills exiting the course. And along the same lines, I have weighted averages, and I also discuss Simpson's Paradox more than most texts. 
Um, I think it's important that they know how and where um, these things can come up and, and bite you and and how to avoid it and how to be, be on the watch for it. But aside from that, um, it's the standard topics, descriptive statistics, some probability leads into inferential statistics, one and two sample hypothesis tests, correlation and regression, um, the standard menu of items. Um, and so that's it. That's my book. It's the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do, the Pineapple Book. I hope you get a chance to uh, take a look.